Well, hello everyone. I hope everybody is doing okay. And here we are. Welcome to Pete's Garden. This is one of the most beautiful nature-packed gardens I actually get the privilege to work in. So I have been here before last year, but before that, the only two sessions I've done is today and last year. And other than that, Pete has maintained this entire garden all by himself. And what a fantastic job he's done so far. But when he asked me to come and give him another hand in this garden, obviously I leapt at the chance. So my main jobs today are just to tidy this place up a little bit and to make it safe for Pete to actually wander around and admire this beautiful garden. So in this video we will be doing the usual mowing and strimming or weed whacking and also taking a look at some of these fantastic plants. <laughs> So before I get cracking, I would absolutely love to hear what your favourite part is about this garden. We've got bug hotels, wind chimes, wrought iron sculptures, which were made by Pete many, many years ago. Log piles, we've got a nature pond. We have a potting bench that's made out of an old pallet. So please keep your eyes peeled and let me know what you think is particularly amazing about this garden. Now I know this is not everybody's cup of tea. Some people might think this is actually quite a messy garden. Others may not. But please just have a look and see the beauty in this garden. And let me know what you find the best. So you'll see this path is a little bit mucky. I'm just going to get these wet leaves raked out the way. Surprisingly, it's not even slippy at all when these are out of the way. Pete doesn't want me to pressure wash. I understand why it would go against the nature of this garden. So a quick rake and a sweep and they're as good as gold.
So now I noticed when I was mowing this lawn, there were lots and lots of twigs and sticks in the grass. I'm just going to get these moved. There are a lot of trees around here, but I also think these crows that have made their nests really, really high in these trees keep dropping twigs when they're building their nest. And when they do, they go off to find another one instead of retrieving the one that they dropped. That's fascinating. Oh dear, I just noticed a butterfly trapped in this greenhouse. Now Pete does leave the door open and the vents to stop this from happening, but it still happens. So he is going to dehydrate and die if he stays in there. So let's get him free. Now I'm no butterfly expert, but I think this is a peacock butterfly. They're one of the ones that have evolved these fake eyes on their wings to scare predators off by making themselves look a bigger animal than what they are. That's pretty cool, isn't it?
Here we found a little patch of purple anemones, or you could call them blue anemones. You can actually buy these as bulbs, and they're absolutely fantastic to plant in your rockeries, or in a location like this. And you'll get a little bit of something different to your normal spring flowers. There appears to be some crocus leaves here, they're quite distinct with a green leaf with a white line running up through the middle. There's no flowers on this one so I'm assuming it's a seed uh, and it might be a few more years before we actually see any flowers out of it. But either way, I think it should stay. And right next to it we have an aquilegia. This is another really distinctive plant that's quite easy to spot and not weed out. Because if you do, you won't get this. So leave them if you see them. They are prolific self-seeders though. All around me here you'll see euphorbia, those are the acid green flowers that look almost alien, aren't they amazing? Uh, there is one or two issues with these though, they will spread quite prolifically. So I am actually going to weed out some of the smaller plants that are trying their best to grow inside this path. And just one more little thing to note, if you ever get your secateurs or your pruners to clip these back, just be aware that this milky white sap or latex is quite irritating on the skin and you really don't want to get it in your eyes, so just be careful. Yes, I know I've got this all over my fingers, but fortunately I have skin like leather. Now, it wouldn't be a Martin the Garden Guy video unless we ran into some of this. Cleavers, or Sticky Willy, or Sticky Weed. Really strange thing about this is, I can't find any more in this garden, just this small patch. So it's coming out.
So, I don't always wear gloves when I'm gardening. I do find it's really nice to actually get your hands in the earth so you can get a feel for the garden. But I've just spotted a few very stingy and very spiky things. So, I'm going to glove up. This plant doesn't normally need an introduction, stinging nettles. Excellent for wildlife, not so good for the legs when you're walking past, so I'm going to take this patch out, just so they don't grow across the path, and sting Pete's legs.
Right guys, the before and after pictures will be up in just a moment. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.